I was in the middle of uh, doing the video of this fluorescent fixture here and uh, took a pause and went with my friend to the store, grocery shopping, all that kind of jazz. And um, yeah, had to go thrifting, of course. So wasn't expecting to find more new old stock stuff. This is awesome. I saw this out of the corner of my eye. It was covered up by some other items. And it is a new inbox Electropack 175 watt mercury vapor area light. I have to say, right off the bat, there's something that really annoys me on this front here. Can you see it? They put the refractor on backwards. Oh my gosh. This is supposed to be in the back, not the front. No wonder I see so many of these like this. They showed it on the picture all wrong. Ooh, hmm. Come on, you got to put it on right if you're going to do an example picture. Can't even get that right. What in the world? Anyway, as you see, picked this up for $10. I picked this one up um, when my friends were in town at the same thrift store. This one was $11. Just did a video of it yesterday, so it needs to get to find a home here. There's that Dell computer that we've been working on. And yeah, so now we have another one to make a video on. Electropack, very cool. The only downside of this particular fixture is that it has had an unfortunate past. It's all cracked up. Ooh, look at that bulb though. So, I'll get it put back together the best I can. But anyway, the socket's good, the ballast good, it's all there. It's all there. It's not like it's destroyed beyond belief. It's just that the refractor is broken. Uh, but the box is in pretty good shape. It's obviously taken a fall on one of its sides for it to crack like that, obviously. Very cool. And next to it here, we have something I wasn't expecting to find. Some Malibu lights. These are little floodlights, 12 volt for outdoor landscape lighting. And this is brand new in box. As far as I can tell, everything is here. Um, I did go through it last night just to make sure. And I, I do believe everything's here. There's no instructions, but it looks like everything is present. So on the outside of the packaging here, we get some nice old graphics. Look at that leaf and the detail in it, you know. Just don't do any of that anymore. And as you can see here, they're floodlights, and that's all that's in here. It's just floodlights. It's not like individual little post-top lights. Not sure what that says. Rudy's something. Maybe that's the address, Woodland Hills. I don't know. Here's the model of this particular kit. Five lamp assemblies, transformer with timer, 50 foot cable. Metallic green is the color. Made in the USA, of course. And it's just the same thing all the way around. Here, the graphics are starting to come off. But, let's go ahead and take a look at what's in here. They're colored. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I thought they'd be all clear like this one. But there you go. You have like a little headlight style bulb. 12 volt with a plastic cover on it. This is a whole plastic assembly here. 18 watt. Looks like the wires just get pushed in on the back here somehow. You can see little pins there. But yeah, these are multicolored. There's blue, clear, green, red, orange. I don't know if you can order it like that or if it just came as an example kit or what. Um, obviously, it wasn't installed because here it is in brand new condition. I really wonder what year this would have been made. <clears throat> here we have Intermatic. It's just some parts for putting the fixtures together. Looks like they also have wall mounts if you want it on the wall versus on a stake. Excuse me. And here's another package with even more crammed into it. So there's the heads for the lights. Again, we have a red one, an orange yellow one, green, of course the clear, and the blue. Then we take out this divider 
and we find some pretty neat stuff sitting here. So we have registration card for the product. And I thought this was pretty neat. 2500 Outdoor Lighting Contest from Intermatic Low Voltage Malibu Lights. Notice the eyes there with the uh, same shape as the floodlights. I wonder if they started with just uh, floodlights, in, you know, instead of the little post top looking ones. Maybe this is a very original um, set. So here you can uh, submit your photos. I believe you could submit a video too. Oh boy, I can't even get this open. With one hand, that is. So you can submit your photos and all that kind of stuff. And there's more inside. So I'm going to save that for, for when we take a deeper look into this in a separate video. And down here, we have the ballast and timer, or transformer rather, and the stakes. Our wire. I like how they just dipped the end in some type of epoxy or something to seal it up. That's kind of funny. Um, but there's our our stakes that would hold the lights. And of course the 120 volt transformer. So very cool. Uh, definitely going to make a video of this and this. So that's what I'm about to do. Additionally, I stopped at a thrift store during the week here. Uh, whenever I find these older metal power strips for a decent price, like three, four dollars, I pick them up. They're just so much better than the plastic ones of today. Look, they have actual outlets in them. You know, it's not like some ridiculous thing. This one looks like it has a little indicator light too. That's pretty cool. Also picked up this Lights of America electronically ballasted 50 watt high pressure sodium wall pack. It was $6 at the thrift store. It is brand new, didn't have a box, but uh, someone taped the installation materials and a pancake box here. I mean, that, that, that wouldn't have came with it in the package, but I'll take it, why not? I have another one of these. Uh, it's right up there in the corner. That one has the coated bulb that they used uh, to ship these with for a while. And this one has the original clear bulb inside. Just got done doing the video of this guy here and uh, FaceTiming my parents. And I do believe this is all finally dry. So, um, of course, when you mix up epoxy, you want to use it up. So I filled in this little hole here that was in the rude lighting fixture. And the rest I just dumped in this big hole here. Obviously, it's not made specifically for metal. I got another one for that. But, hey, I want to use up what I have, so why not? So, I'm going to take this tape off, and hopefully we'll be okay to do that. No, you know, nothing leaked through enough to hold the tape on there for eternity. And then, we're definitely going to need to find a home for this beautiful fixture out here. Oh, yeah, it's coming off just fine. Okay, I'm going to use two hands. I just don't want to rip it apart again. I've decided I want to put the two new bucket lights up over here. Um, you know, eh, it seems like a decent spot. I thought about putting them over here, you know, in this open area, but uh, over here, at least if you turn them on, you can get some useful light out of them. And they're kind of out of the way. I mean, I'm not going up here every 12 minutes to get carpet down, so that's not a big deal. And there should definitely be a two by four there because I mean, there are for all these other you know, joists and everything. So just got to move uh, a couple of these wire clips and we should be good to go. Okay, I have made the contraption. Three lighting uh, styles of different generations. Mercury vapor, high pressure sodium, and LED. Sure, you could put fluorescent and metal halide in here too, but you know what? I don't have that at the moment. So, hey, these are all brand new too. New old stock. I mean, nothing's really old about the LED. It was gone on clearance. But, um, yeah, new, new, new. Now we just got to install them all. We got the board mounted up there. Tried to leave enough space here that hopefully that one will fit with the street light. And, uh, yeah, let's uh, get them up there. There they are, all mounted up. And you see it just clears. 
<laughs> the garage door, so that's perfect. Got to put a bulb in there. I probably won't put the clear one in. I'll probably put in a, a coated one because I have a bunch of those, uh, you know, just in case something happens. Save the clear one. And, of course, we already got the high-pressure sodium, and that's LED. And uh, now we just need to take care of these cords. Wonderful. Now they're up and out of the way and on display instead of hidden away. And a quick view at all of the lights. And the traffic light, I suppose. Always got to take some time to clean up a little bit. And we definitely need to do that. Just got done making the video for these. Pretty neat system. Uh, it would have been nice if it didn't have a couple things that were stripped out. But other than that, I do like that it, you know, has a couple different options here. And the fact that it came with the world's longest twist ties. Because I have no idea why. Other than that, I think I'm going to use these around Christmas time. They'd be great for lighting up the outside of the house, being that they're colored. And, um... They're going to live back in this box until that time comes. What in the world is this? Well, it's an iBook G3 clamshell. The blueberry version. At least I think that's the blue color name for this one. I have a tangerine one already in the collection. I picked that one up a very, very, very long time ago. I believe it was actually the second Apple computer or second Apple laptop in my collection. I got the tangerine one from my high school way back when, when I was working there over the summer and they were going through all their computers. I saw it sitting on one of the tables and through communications, it became mine. And it's a very special laptop to me. Uh, because of that, it's the only computer I ever got from my, my school system back home. So that's a very special. The sad part about the tangerine one is that I've gone through like three screens on that thing because at first when I acquired it, I tried taking the bezel apart to refurbish uh, everything underneath it because it had some just a little bit of dirt which I really should have just left alone when I think about it now because I ended up breaking the screen and boy was it hard to find another one I ended up having to buy a screen for one of the lime green version it was, versions it was this whole back piece yeah, actually uh, with the screen I had to take the screen out but the, not, the positive part about that is that it had the green lime green apple logo in it which I could take out and put into the tangerine one because the tangerine one was missing the apple logo in the middle now so anyway i already have a tangerine one in the collection but when i saw this one at repc when i went there with my friends when they were in town i had to pick it up it was on a shelf uh, behind their counter i asked them if i could take a look at it and they even plugged it in. They plugged it in and I was able to turn it on and it sounded absolutely fine. The screen lit up perfectly fine. I didn't see anything wrong with the screen. And it, it was searching for an operating system, but like they told me, they, they wiped it. So that's all gone. And they didn't really have, I'm guessing, something to install it with. But that's okay. I have macOS installed disks. Not a problem. So what did we get for $135? Well... We got a iBook G3 clamshell without having to get it through eBay or Craigslist, which is getting, oops, boy, I just uh, bumped the camera real bad there, I apologize, uh, harder to do. Uh, so the specs here, it's a 300 megahertz uh, G3 with 96 megabytes of RAM, four, giga, four gigabytes, yeah, four megabytes of video memory, a CD drive, three gigabyte hard drive, and uh, of course it runs macOS. They say 8.6. Maybe that's what it shipped with when it was original. Um, the other one, when I the Tangerine one, when I got it, was running macOS 9. And, it, of course, it does go up to 10.3.9. But that's a little much for the 3 gig hard drive. So I'm probably going to put macOS 9 on here, just like the Tangerine one. Now, the Tangerine one that I got is a little bit upgraded. Uh, when whoever got it in the school system back in the day put the six gigabyte hard drive in it, which is great because, I mean, that doubled the space from the standard three gigabyte hard drive at the time. Uh, I believe the other one does have a 300 megahertz G3, no difference there. Uh, I put a, I think I went ridiculous on it. I think I put a 512 megabyte stick under the keyboard, so it has a ridiculous amount of memory. But other than that, um... That's pretty much the only difference. The one difference I did notice, and hey, it's nice it came with a power supply here, um, is that this cord is not see-through. Where the cord that I have for the tangerine one, you can see the wires in it. You know, it's clear like the end piece here. So I'm not sure 
Um, if that's a different generation or if they just put that on there from the Snow White iBook G3s that came after the clamshells, I'm not sure. But it's nice to have the power supply for the price for sure. Okay, so let's take a look at this thing. It's in very good shape, like in very good shape. And uh, there's not a lot of dirt or dust or anything. Of course, just the two stickers on it. Of course, we have our handle up here at the top. And I don't see much for cracking, which is very common up in this area. On this side, of course, we have the power port, our CD drive. We have a battery here in the bottom, and that discoloration is very common. My tangerine one looks like that, too. And, of course, we have our one USB, I think it's like 1.1 or 1.0 port. Of course, audio out. I don't know if it does audio in. Uh, Ethernet and modem. And the one thing that I wasn't sure about is this little dark spot here. And it looks like it's definitely underneath, like something got really hot. But I'm not entirely sure what happened there. And then there obviously was a sticker here, like it was part of a system. Like a system of machines at a business. You know, so it was cataloged. Um, so maybe that's where it came from. But other than that, the bottom's in really good shape. So let's go ahead and open it up. Isn't it nice you can do it with one hand? Beautiful. Okay, so there's the screen. It's in really good shape. There's no scratches in it. There's, I mean, a little bit of indentation there from the keys, but again, that seems pretty common depending on how it was stored. But like I say, there's no scratches. There's no deep scratches in it, which is amazing. Uh, it's hard to find ones that aren't like that. Now you see like this little dirt up here and stuff. That's what I was trying to clean on the tangerine one. And yeah, I've learned my lesson. Don't do that. The Apple logo here isn't as uh, cracked up as some of them can get. So maybe it has low hours on it. I'm not entirely sure there. But uh, this usually has a lot more cracking going on. Of course, we have our little speaker. Our keyboard, which seems to be pretty good. We have our power button, trackpad, and single mouse clicker there. You know, it probably doesn't have any battery, but hey, you never know. Yeah, no battery. No surprise there, to be honest. So, um, out of curiosity, I'm going to get a little screwdriver so we can open this up. I'm also going to find my Mac OS 9.2.2 uh, .2 CD, and we'll get this thing turned on and see what we can do with it. Under the keyboard here, we definitely have some uh, remnants of, uh, I really hope it's not liquid or something. It doesn't really look, I mean, I don't know. Something, something must have been spilled on it at some point, unfortunately. Uh, of course, we have a, the standard dust and everything like that. And uh, we do not have an airport card. I put one in my uh, tangerine version. And I think underneath this, there is a RAM expansion slot. So let's take a look. And of course, over here is the hard drive, but uh, that's a whole ordeal to get to. So we're just gonna let it be. We definitely have a stick in here. Not entirely sure. I don't think it comes with one. I think we just have these here and that's like your built-in memory. So let's see what it is. For some reason, I thought that there would be a sticker on the other side, but there's not. It's just blank. So whatever to that. Okay, so we got plugged in. Let's see what we get. Well, first of all, got an orange light, so that's good. Here we go. It's a very quiet speaker. And there's the screen. Looking nice. And we should come up with a question mark here. Yep, there we go. Okay, so let's open. Okay, that works. Nice, nice. I have my super official uh, Mac OS 9.2 disc here. Probably will need, oh, we might be able to get it out with just one hand. I'll put it in there. Well, spinning up, that's good. 
And the question stopped. We have the finder guy there. We got a mouse. Oh, well, it went away. <laughs> of course, it's loading up its install disk here, so. Mac OS 9.2. Wonderful. It's sounding pretty good, actually. Oh, we got a mouse. Okay. Trackpad works. Nice. Super happy with this. Until I find some way to break something, with which I do with all these kind of rare things for some reason. Super annoying. Yeah, this is going to be a process. Slowly getting there, but we're making progress. Okay, we're going to quit. And let's see if we can boot from the hard drive. Very quiet. Okay, got our screen here. I hear the hard drive. <clears throat> okay, we got the little Happy Mac. And it sounds like the hard drive is seeking. Of course, the disk is still spinning up because it's still in there. It looks like a color match to the background. It did the same thing when I installed uh, Mac OS 9 on the Tangerine machine. It like knew that uh, it was Tangerine in color. I'm real curious, when I first got the Tangerine one, uh, in its setup there are some little videos uh, that it greets you with. I don't know if this will do that or not. I don't know if that's part of the operating system or if you need the original install disks. <laughs> Looks like some type of jellyfish or something. Same type of thing it did with the Tangerine one. Uh, it shows like a really interesting background like that for the, you know, to, to match the color of the machine. Well, we're most certainly here. Isn't that awesome? Of course, yeah, time error. Yeah, uh-huh, and it's thinking, so we can't really do anything. Uh, yeah, we'll take care of the time and all that stuff. And we're up and running. Date and time is set, now we'll see if it keeps it. I mean, the battery probably isn't charging anything at all, to be honest, because it's just so old. But, uh, it's functional. That's super positive. Of course, I have to install some applications or something on it, but, uh, I'm really happy with what we got done this evening. So this is the Grand Light Area Light that uh, I did an unboxing of a while back. It was installed here at our shop for, I'd say, maybe a month or two before everything went wrong. Uh, the ballast started to get really noisy, and as you can see, uh, the bulb had a tragedy and the outer globe fell off and uh, broke all over the ground. Now, it was funny because uh, we were standing uh, on the other side of the shop and all of a sudden we heard this dunk dunk, like it fell off, uh, but it didn't land directly on the concrete floor yet. It landed on a table that's right here. And uh, then like a couple seconds later, we heard crash. And, uh, of course, there's glass everywhere, and we were like, what in the world was that? Oh, well, we came over, and, uh, yeah, so the outer jacket of the bulb broke off. Now, I don't know if it's because of heat or manufacturing or the fact that the ballast is super noisy. But as you can also see, let me zoom back in, the refractor is starting to yellow. And, of course, when I saw the uh, outer bulb fall off, I naturally unplugged it because you don't want all that UV but even with the uh, UV that was getting through with the bulb was making it start to yellow, as you can see. So, I mean, it was only on like this for maybe a minute before I unplugged it, and it wouldn't have caused it that quick. So, of course, I have a new bulb for it, and uh, we'll give it another go after. Well, it sat like this, not used, for, boy, months and months and months, because... I just haven't had a chance to get around to replacing the bulb in it. Again, we're going to do that now. 
Well, that's what's left of the bulb. As you can see, when I took it out, the um, support here literally broke off. I wasn't even like trying that hard, but I mean, it was in there. So yeah, that broke off. There's the arc tube. Pretty decent size, but small, you know, for a 175 watt, at least small this way, but that's pretty common for these newer ones. Very small electrodes in there. Still interesting to see though. Now we have a GE bulb to put in there. And here's the new bulb. We'll see how well it does. I'm sure the ballast will be annoying as can be, but uh, let's try it out. Yep, that's annoying. Goodness. I guess that's uh, what happens when you uh, use the cheapest mercury vapor bucket light you can find in the universe. Oh, I'm definitely going to have to replace this with a different light. <clears throat> the ballast is just way too annoying. Uh, but either way, it's working again. I don't know if I'll leave it on or not, just because of, well, the ballast is annoying. But we're not going to be in the space much longer. In fact, just a couple weeks. So I want to do a quick little tour of the lighting here. So all the lights that light up the warehouse are F32T8 fluorescent, electronically ballasted, 277 volt. Uh, they're on two separate switches, one for that side and uh, one for this side. Uh, the line is drawn with those poles there in the middle. And now some of them stay on during the night, four of them do, and uh, most of them, you know, turn off. I'm sure uh, the reason that some of them stay on is literally just for security, but uh, that, that's what they do. Some of them also have the little red light on them, I'm sure, for emergency light backup. Uh, but not many. I think there's just two fixtures that have that. And then, other than these lights, which have a mix of bulbs in them, as you can see, a lot of them are burned out. Some are cool white, some are daylight or just white or whatever. Uh, it's a mix in most of them. And this one has the little red light in the middle, as you can see, too. In the workbench area, I put one of these GE little power floods here. It's 250 watt metal halide. It needed its capacitor replaced, and then it worked absolutely fine. So we use that here in our uh, workbench area and where we refurbish machines and things like that. Of course, you've already seen the uh, real cheapo mercury vapor light here. There's a little table underneath it that it lights up with a bunch of batteries and, and different things plugged in. So it's really here just to light up a, a secondary workbench style table. And then over here I have the second 250 watt metal halide GE power flood fixture. This one has the original uh, Phillips bulb that I found when I picked them up. This one also needed the capacitor changed. And of course, once I did that, it works just fine and lights everything up really nice. The reason that I have one over here is uh, this light only has one bulb working. So we need a little bit more light over here and I don't have a ladder or a scissor lift or anything to get up there. So that's our solution for the moment. The bathrooms are real simple. They just have these F32 T8 wraparounds. Now, when we first moved into the space a couple months ago, yes, I know we're already moving again. Um, this one didn't work very well. It had very uh, pink bulbs in it, like they were mercury starved. So I replaced the bulbs in it and well, that didn't really solve it. So I ended up putting, anyway, somebody had to use that bathroom. So I walked over to this one. Uh, in the other bathroom, I put in some LED uh, direct replacement bulbs that did not need the ballast removed. Of course, the bulbs do both nowadays, but I just put them right in place and that worked. Uh, obviously, as you saw, the fixture lit up and it functioned absolutely fine. It was one of those multicolor select ones, so I just set it to the middle setting so it used both of the LEDs, at least I'm assuming that's what it's doing, and uh, just dimming them down. <clears throat> anyway, this one in the other bathroom here is still fluorescent, and as you can see, it has some pretty dark end blackening here. Uh, F32 
T8 naturally. Up in the front office area here, we have these three lamp F32 T8 um, recessed troffer fixtures. This one, the bulb just recently burned out the other day and uh, I don't have any of the other ones on yet, but uh, I suppose we can. So they all work. Uh, when we first moved into this space, literally all the bulbs in the office here did not work. Um, like one of them was just barely glowing. It was weird that uh, they never did anything about it, but they probably had like desk lamps or something. So all the bulbs that are uh, white, white, or bright white or whatever are newer. They're GE from Lowe's. And this one that's a cool white, looks more like a warm white, came out of that bathroom that uh, we were originally talking about where the bulbs didn't work. The bulbs are fine. As you can see, one of them is being used right here. So I don't know about that. So I was making a video putting together this particular fixture here in the middle of the screen and you know I came to the point where I need to install it you know I want to demonstrate it for all of you naturally but where where do I want to install it well it's been a week and I still haven't really decided where I want to install it now behind it is a dual F40 T12 fixture and next to it is another F30 style fixture that one's by uh Cooper Lighting or uh Metal Lux or whatever and this one is that Kenny whatever thing. Okay, so thinking about it, there's all kinds of places it can go, literally, like all kinds. But I like it to be useful in some way, shape, or form. And I'm already using uh, some of these fixtures over here in the uh, workout area or, as, or the gym, as my friend likes to call it now. Same, same style of fixture, F30, you know, and, and it's used, they just plug right in there. So, you know, I'm thinking, what do I want to put these things? Well, I'm already using them here. I could put, you know, two more in the middle, but I think that would ruin it. That'd be too much. And they don't match these other ones, so it just kind of look weird. It could go over here, you know, maybe fit here or something or somewhere else. I'm keeping this big spot open in case, you know, ever find an eight foot fixture, which I don't know if I ever even want because uh, good luck hauling that thing around. But there's obviously numerous other places it could go. So I ended up thinking and thinking and eventually came up with, you know, why don't we get it into this system? It's on the same system as those, same switch. Why not have the main, the main switch do F30 fluorescence? And that's all it does. Okay, great idea. Well, uh, I can put it right here and then have it plug in to this here. I have some plates that turn these boxes into uh, outlets and uh, that would work. And then I had an even bigger brain moment and thought, well, if the door's up, that's gonna, you know, impede the light and whatnot. So it should really go this way. You know, so when the door's up all the way, all the light is being used. Um, so that's good. Uh, and then, well, you don't really need it to be plugged in. There's plenty of wire here. Just eliminate this box and light and uh, wire it directly into the fixture. Why not? Okay, well, that's one of them. That's a great idea. What about the second one? Well, this is the light over here. Uh, we could put the other fixture right here. I don't really want anything in the middle here too much because there's tubs up here with bulbs in them that I get up and down somewhat frequently. Maybe every other hang something, you know, like I have a fixture here, um, but having something in the middle kind of impedes getting up in between there. I mean, I can do it. It's not a problem. Uh, watch me go back on my idea and end up putting it here or something ridiculous. But um, this is kind of in an odd spot. And I'm never really sure what kind of bulb to put in it. Well, that second fixture can go right here. Put it on this beam here and it'll be the light for over here. I don't need a ton of light with that switch. Just enough to see what's going on over here. Because all I really need to do is get to the switch over there. So I can turn on all the other lights. Um, so that's the idea. And that's what the project is going to be. Got the second fixture put together and converted it to preheat. So that's awesome. Now, obviously, it needs to be put up. And uh, as we discussed, obviously I want to move this and I was thinking of putting the fixture here, but now I'm having second thoughts. I'm thinking of actually putting it right here in the middle. Uh, why is that? Well, it's, it's skinny and it puts more light over here. Of course, this will unfortunately have to be moved to somewhere else, but uh, being that it's much uh, skinnier and whatnot, it won't be in the way as much as some of these bigger objects that will need to be moved. 
Plus, uh, when you turn the switch on, at least you'll have a little more light in this direction. Uh, the other reason being is that the other uh, F30 fixture I have at work needs to come down because of us moving and it will need to find a home. So it can find a home somewhere on this side of the garage and it has a very long cord on it and it'll be able to reach all the way over to the outlet that'll be right here. Uh, so we're just gonna do that. Uh, need to take this down and to move this over. Got the mercury vapor light down, got the socket down and converted it to a plug as you can see here. And now I'm thinking of putting it right here. Uh, the wires seem to sit really nicely right here and they reach over just fine without needing too much modification. Now there's obviously extra wire here, but I'll just feed that on its way down here eventually. Uh, so now we gotta mount this thing up. There we go, it's all secure. Now we just gotta put the fluorescent light right here. And uh, there's a little bit of space, so I'm gonna leave it on this end. So you can always put another light here if desired. It's up. And we have a nice little gap there for whatever in the future. Looking pretty good. I left the warm white tube in it because the other T8 tubes that I have, uh, they're cool white, which I would like more. It would match, you know, this stuff. But they're altos. Sure, they're 30 watts, but I think these uh, slightly older uh, made in Chile warm white tubes are probably a better fit for the preheat ballast. So here's the other fixture uh, installed on the other side. I just uh, screwed it up there. Thankfully, thankfully, the holes that are already provided in the fixture lined up perfectly uh, with the joists here. I put the screws in at a little bit of an angle just to make sure I hit them because it was uh, it was tight, but you know what? They did line up and I was super happy about that. So I tried to space it somewhat in between uh, the, the main beam here and the very ending of where the garage door kind of ends. So it's right in the middle to give as much coverage as possible. And there's plenty of clearance here for the garage door uh, mounting and all that kind of fancy stuff. I wanted it to be as much in the middle as possible, you know, just to light this up. Now, obviously this light's going to replace this one right here. So I'm just gonna use the wire that's going to this box and uh, just feed it into the fixture here. And uh, that's how that will be wired. I have to say, I'm very happy with all the F30 fluorescent fixtures being on the same switch. I think that's pretty cool. You know, you turn that on and that's all you get is F30 fluorescence. Very nice now, like I say, we just have to add one more down here and we'll be good to go. There's a new home for the mercury vapor light. It's nice having it a little bit higher, to be honest, and it's not too heavy, so it's fine on this a little thin board that's up here that'll hold it uh, perfectly fine. I just looped the wire around and coiled it up and hid it on top of the fixture here. It's not plugged into anything, but uh, if I ever do need it, there it is.